So you've just bought your shiny new Ryzen 5 1600 AF and you may want to save money and go with something like an A320 motherboard. And if you live in an area where you can't get access to say a A320 from one of the big brands like MSI or Gigabyte or Zeus or ASRock, then are these AliExpress specials going to do the job? Well, today we've got the budget A320 AliExpress showdown where we've got here the Onda first up, which is coming in with a shipping price of $65 shipped to your door. Now, this one right here does have a BIOS update on the website, which does say it supports Ryzen 3000 chips. And also upon opening the box, this is all you really get. There's the motherboard, the IO shield, and a SATA cable. And then up here we've got next, the colorful motherboard. This is coming in with a smooth price tag of $55. So it's $10 cheaper than the Onda. And what you get is in the last 10 days on their website, I've actually seen that they've released a BIOS update for Ryzen 3000. So this one here coming in $10 cheaper. And then we've got last up here, the Challenger. I did check this out before when I did a build last year, an all AliExpress build, but I think I used the version one. This right here is the version two, which is supposed to have a one gigabit per second ethernet port and just got better specs overall. So essentially it's an upgraded version, but the problem with this one is, is it doesn't have any support on the website for any BIOS updates. The last BIOS update for a Maxon A320 motherboard is from 2018. And of course, if you want Matisse CPUs, you want at least a 2019 BIOS on there. So this one, I don't think will work with 3000 series chips, but what we're gonna quickly do now is put the Ryzen 3000 uh, 3300X in all these boards and quickly check for that compatibility. And if so, can we update the BIOSes? And then we'll get onto the Ryzen 5 1600 AF tests to see if it can handle the heat on the VRM. But this one right here, coming in with a price tag of $50, it is the cheapest in today's comparison. So it does have that going for it. And honestly, the one that I used in the past, it's still going strong to this date. So even though they're cheap, they can still do the job. And this is one thing I'll point out before we get into this comparison, is that if you're getting an A320 motherboard, seriously think about limiting it to a six core only in that you're getting a Ryzen 5 3600 if it supports Ryzen 3000, or you're just going with a Ryzen 5 1600 AF or a 2600. Personally, when I think of A320, I think of a 65 watt TDP limit just as a safe zone. Anything over that, you may get throttling of performance, or of course the uh, temperatures on your VRM may get too hot where it'll cause problems over time. And of course, with those problems comes hassle, which I'm sure none of us want. But last up here, we've got the Galax A320M. I've never tried a Galax motherboard before, but this one does have BIOS support for the latest Ryzen 3000 series on the website too. So three of the four boards are supporting BIOS updates on the website. And this one here, unfortunately, it's no longer for sale on AliExpress. And I don't know where you can get it anymore, but I thought I'd include it in the comparison just in case you can pick it up on a deal somewhere and you're wanting to know what it performs like. Though, with all that aside, let's roll that intro and then start getting into the compatibility test straight away. So we've updated the BIOS on this Galax board now, and the problem is it still doesn't work with a Ryzen 5 1600 AF or a Ryzen 3 3300X. So we're gonna give this board a miss and get on with the others. And now we've booted up the colorful motherboard and there's already some good news. And that is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, it works out of the box, at least with this one that I bought off AliExpress. Another good thing is, is that it does have a RAM overclock feature within this BIOS and it's actually working fine. The 3000 megahertz CL16 stuff that we put in works fine with the 3200 megahertz profile 
that they have in there. Now I might try and uh, drop the timings a little bit with the other profiles they have, but I just wanted to see if this concept of this memory overclock feature would actually work with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. And sure enough, it does work absolutely fine. Another thing is too, we're running the uh, stress test right now on the VRM. So we're gonna let that sit for a good 20 minutes and come back and see how hot the VRM gets with the 1600 AF. Now, another thing is too, it is running the all core boost here at 3.6 gigahertz. And it depends on the motherboard. Sometimes it can go up to 3.7 gigahertz. I believe, but 3.6 gigahertz all core on a budget A320 board for 55 bucks is already looking pretty good. And here we are with the first motherboard that has completed a semi-recommendation testing phase here. And this is a bit of a weird one because the Ryzen 5 1600 AF pretty much failed on this motherboard in that the VRM was getting up to 118 degrees Celsius, and this is in a 21C environment. So basically, if we get into summer, this thing will start throttling, and it's just not good for longevity purposes. So it was getting up to 3.6 gigahertz all core, 3.7 gigahertz single core, scoring around 2,730 points in Cinebench, and then it was uh, reporting that it was juicing 77 watts in hardware info, but it was juicing 150 watts from the wall, the whole package. Now, Here's where the news does get good for this motherboard though, because the Nikon board is a true one gigabit per second, testing the speeds out, they looked fine. And then moving on to the onboard audio, surprisingly, it was decent. Uh, we had a minus seven decibel, uh, 10 hertz to zero hertz roll off, but the crosstalk was negative 82 on left and right channels. And the good thing is after that, uh, frequency response roll off the line was really straight this is literally the straightest line i've seen for a board that's a super entry level budget motherboard at 55 us dollars shipped so that news there is looking pretty good for the board itself but then we had to update the bios to get the 3300x to work and the update process is a little bit tedious you got to go to the website download the uh, bios update it doesn't update within the bios itself so you've got to use, I just use the Windows method and then it runs all these commands and then it asks you, look, the ROM sizes don't match up. Do you want to force flash? And this is the same with the Galax. It follows the same method. You just got to hit yes. I think it's E key and it accepts it. Then it force flashes your BIOS. Then you change over the CPU and you can have your 3300X or 3100 working absolutely fine. And I do point to these two four cores specifically because they work really well. Like I'm running a benchmark in the background now for Cinebench and it's working absolutely fine uh, with the four core 3300X. And the VRM is only getting up to around 70 degrees maximum, which is absolutely fine. So the scores here for the 3300X, it definitely gets a pass. The Cinebench all core is going up to 4.225 gigahertz roughly and that's scoring 2,542 points, which is quite impressive. And then you've got that RAM overclocking feature on an A320 motherboard, which also allows you to lock in even better RAM speeds, and they do work quite well on this budget board. So overall, it's not geared up really towards six cores, but it's geared up quite well towards budget four cores, and it does a pretty good job at that. Let's, however, now move over to the Onda and run some more tests.
And here we are now just finishing up testing the Onda A320V version 3.0. And now this worked out of the box with the 3300X. And I did like that. So if you wanna go get a board and a 3300X, you don't have to worry about using another CPU to update the BIOS. But that is literally the only good piece of news with this board where everything else just started going downhill. And that is when I first started it up, there was, you had to go really deep into the BIOS to find any sort of memory overclocking, which maxed out at uh, 2.5 gigahertz initially. And I was like, okay, this is really not gonna work. And then after that, I did decide to update the BIOS and we saw that there was a 3000 megahertz option there and it just didn't work. The, the overclocking on the memory just didn't work. And so they really need to update the BIOS to have a more simplistic way of locking in higher memory speeds and getting that to work. Uh, so their BIOS does need a bit of work, but other than that, the temperatures on the VRM ended up being a little bit worse than the colorful board, despite it having what it looks like a couple of extra phases on board. And it scored 71 degrees and it was drawing roughly the same wattage from the wall as the uh, colorful board. Though surprisingly in Cinebench, this took the Ryzen 3 3300X getting it close to 2,600 points at 4.3 gigahertz all core. And then the single core went up to 4.35 gigahertz. So it was boosting it at quite a healthy level. It's just the BIOS and the tuning of memory in particular really needs work with this board. It's got a bit of potential, but the potential's let down with essentially the programming. Though besides that, before and after the BIOS update, it also didn't work with a Ryzen 5 1600 AF. And if anything, if we're getting hotter temperatures on the VRM, then the colorful board, it's probably going to fail. And so I decided not to test the onboard audio and the NIC speeds out because I just simply can't recommend this board to anyone at this point in time, especially when it's $10 more than the previous board that we just tested. And it's the morning after and we have here the A320M2-VH. Now, I was surprised because in the listing, it didn't say it supported Matisse CPUs, but the Ryzen 3 3300X was working absolutely fine on this motherboard. Now, we saw with the temperatures, they got a little bit higher than the colorful motherboard. So the VRM is probably a little bit inferior to that of this one right here but it also comes in $5 cheaper shipped. So it's coming just under 50 USD shipped to your door worldwide. And the funny thing is this one did have an inferior BIOS, but at least unlike the Onda, we were able to get our memory speeds up to, in this case, I tried 3,066 megahertz and it worked absolutely fine. So even though there's no support for a BIOS update on Maxon's website for this board, the one that's shipped with this will support the new 3100 and 3300X. Though keep in mind, just like the other boards here, I probably wouldn't recommend going with a six core just because the VRMs over time, longevity, we saw that temperature going over 100 degrees on this board. But unfortunately for the Challenger, it didn't even flat out work with the 1600 AF. It just wouldn't boot, period. So that's the problem with this. Though going through the other figures with the onboard audio, it was, uh, again, inferior to the colorful board where we saw a minus 10 decibels drop off from under 10 hertz. And then the rest of the frequency from 600 hertz and upwards, that was actually shaky. So pretty bad onboard audio. Then the mic import, that was showing some heavy noise too. And then the uh, NIC, surprisingly, has been upgraded, like they're saying, from 100 megabits per second to one gigabit per second. So with all that out of the way, let's now move on to a conclusion with these four AliExpress banger motherboards. So straight up, we got the Galax board, which had compatibility issues. I couldn't get this to work. So that was like automatically out of the equation. 
even though it kind of had even a little bit of bling on it and it looked pretty decent. Though, then we're moving on to the Onda and this one looked promising at first, but after we went through it, it just ended up being a disappointment, especially the BIOS. That really needs work on this. The memory uh, overclocking was just pretty much non-existent and it was just buried in a heap of other options, which I would say is more suited towards someone running a low powered server. So that might be an option for you. There was a lot of options in the BIOS to choose from with this particular board. But when it came to gaming and making something dedicated for gamers, this wasn't the board for you. Then we've got the Challenger. And this board at $50 ship worldwide. If you can get a cheap four core, whether it be a Ryzen 5 1400 or a Ryzen 3 3100, 3300X, then this board right here, it is going to check out. But the problem with that is that the onboard audio is really bad. So I'd recommend just for the sake of uh, the health of your ears, I would get a better onboard audio solution and not use this one. But also at the same time, the VRM, even with the four core, was getting pretty hot. And when I've tested A320s in the past from Gigabyte and also ASRock, they've even handled a Ryzen 5 3600 absolutely fine. I've had no qualms with that. So this one here, if you've seen what I've talked about in this video, and you know what it's about and you wanna save that $20 over say an ASRock board, even on AliExpress, then you that's up to you to take that gamble. I personally wouldn't recommend it because we've got the next board right here, the Colorful, which is only another $5 more and had decent onboard audio and the temperatures were better. Even though it was a slight victory, it was still better in terms of not just its power efficiency, it was slightly more power efficient, but also the temperatures were lower on this VRM. So make no mistake, all the VRMs on these A320 motherboards are pretty crap. But that doesn't mean that you can't still get a decent gaming performance, especially out of the likes of this one right here. So we saw those performance figures with the 3300X. This was giving out some really good numbers, both on the all core and the single core speeds. So really when it comes down to it, we've got one winner amongst the bunch and I wouldn't really call it a winner per se because it didn't really sit well with the six core and that the temperatures on the Ryzen 5 1600 AF were getting too hot for my liking. Now, one thing you could do coming out of this, you could maybe fit in some uh, heat sinks, but it would be pretty difficult amongst the inner parts of this VRM here and then put a fan over those heat sinks and you could get some good value for money and still run a six core. Though the problem still exists for all four of these A320 boards here, and that is that the ones that I've tested in the past, the ASRock and also the Gigabyte, even their entry level boards are much better than this colorful board right here. So the colorful does win in today's comparison. And I will say that I did like the BIOS. It was very good. And the memory OC feature that they implemented worked extremely well, though it still leaves a little bit to be desired. And also on that note, if you do get this board and you're getting say a Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X, do make sure that it's got either the 1008 BIOS or the 1009 BIOS because the 1007A BIOS, which was released after the 1008 BIOS, it's weird, I know the dates, I had to double check all this, won't support the Matisse CPUs like it says in the notes. So you have to make sure that it's got the two BIOSes that says support for Matisse CPUs Otherwise your CPU won't boot. And there is no BIOS flashback feature on any of these four boards that I've featured here today. So that's pretty much it. When it comes to cheap A320 motherboards from AliExpress from brands that you may have never heard of before, the, the compromises are there. Even though you can save some money, the compromises are definitely there. So making a clean cut recommendation now with these four motherboards, I would only really go with the colorful motherboard at their current price points. And with that said, I would keep it strictly to a maximum of a four core. And if you wanted to go with a six core, then I'd recommend stepping it up to an ASRock or Gigabyte A320 and spending a little bit extra money. But for what it's worth, this board right here did show a lot of potential and I am gonna be keeping an eye out for what colorful do in the future, especially with their motherboards. And maybe if they were to release an A320 with a slightly better VRM that would handle six cores, then I'd think they'd have a winner on their hands. In terms of the other three, they're really not worth it. I would give them a miss. 
That's just my opinion, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, and also let us know in the comment section below what you think of today's AliExpress A320 Roundup. Though before I get on out of here, we got the question of the day, which comes from 3 Electronic Zero, and they ask, Aorus Pro, the new Tomahawk, question mark. And I gotta be honest, uh, checking the new Aorus Pro boards, I've only had one come through here, that was the Z490 Aorus Pro AX, but it looks like their Pro lineup is going to be their premium value sort of thing. Like you're going to get a really good VRM out of Gigabyte. And now with Aorus on Gigabyte motherboards, Aorus basically means nowadays really good VRM. That's what I've been told from Gigabyte themselves. So the Aorus Pro looks like it's coming in with the uh, best value for a VRM if that's what you're looking for out of a new motherboard. So whether it's B550 or Z490 or X570, the uh, Aorus Pro is that lineup from Gigabyte. It's gonna give you a really premium VRM for the money. And with all that out of the way, if you guys are still here and you wanna see the content the moment it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one pretty soon. Peace out for now, bye.